What's up, y'all? It's Precise back with another video, and this is a tough loss. Now, coming in, they had to report that Brandon Ingram was going to start this game, which I was ecstatic about. I thought he was going to come off the bench because, you know, everyone around the world wants Kyle Kuzma to start at the, the four, and LeBron started at the three, and Brandon Ingram, you know, go to work on the second unit. And I kind of agree, but I kind of don't because Brandon Ingram has been the longest tenured Laker, you know, here. So, he's going to feel obligated to start whether or not and you feel like he put in a lot of work this offseason and they also said that Andrew Ling is not going to play today so I was like okay this has got to be a guarantee win you know the Timberwolves are not that very good they don't have chemistry uh better than the Lakers who have you know up and down chemistry wise and I don't even think Luke Walton can get out coached by Tom Thibodeau in 2018 you know I thought it was 2011 in the way Tom Thibodeau out coached Luke Walton now the main thing I was mad about this game is the rotations. I mean, you, I liked how they, how Luke Walton staggered Brandon Ingram and LeBron James minutes because their chemistry isn't meshed well as of right now, and I don't feel like it's, it's gonna be bad forever. You know, the same thing happened with Dwayne Wade and LeBron James in Miami for the first 20 games. You know, because Dwayne Wade is a mid-range uh, shooter. He's not a three-point shooter like LeBron is uh, used to. You know, in Cleveland. And then, you know, that's what people, that's the stigma that LeBron James and these shooters and guys who need to cut and high energy basketball players. But Brandon Ingram is just in like the same realm as Dwayne Wade. So I'm not worried about, you know, B.I.'s and Bron chemistry. You know, it's only seven games in the season, I think. So about game 25, game 30, that's when we, if they still have these problems, that's when we have to, you know, address them. And I'm a big B.I. fan, but I said if he doesn't come out this game, you know, scoring, and doing what he does well, then there's gonna be a lot of people saying he should go to the bench. B.I. came out on fire. I think the first half he was six or seven from the field, 17 points, played some good defense. I think he had three blocks in the whole game. He finished with 24 points. And he uh, let out a lot of array of moves. And he was very aggressive, you know, in that second quarter when LeBron was out. So I have no uh, worry about Brandon Ingram. Many people, many people was like, should Kuzma start, should B.I. start? Just put B.I. at the two, and that's what Luke Walton did. Six, nine, shooting guard. And his skill set fits the shooting guard mode more than a small four role, in my opinion. Especially when we have LeBron James on our team. And Kuzma had a decent game, too. I think he finished with close to 20 points. He's, Kuzma's going to get 20 points regardless of what else he does. I just worry about the defense and his shot selection. If that comes together in this system, it's going to be wonders for B.I. LeBron and Kuzma as the forwards on the starting unit. Now let's get to the most important uh, positions in the starting unit is the point guard and the center. First, we're going to start with the point guard. Now Lonzo played, uh, he had a stretch of games, like four straight, where he was playing flat out amazing, shooting 50% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, hitting free throws, playing great D, hitting clutch shots, all that. But once Rondo come back, I feel like it's not connected well because Ron I feel like Luke Walton likes Rondo more than Lonzo Ball because Luke Walton said that Ray John Rondo was an elite point guard in this league even though I don't think that I feel like he's a good starter he's a good floor general he's a good IQ person but he's got up there with age he can't really score like that he doesn't really shoot and he's I feel like he stat pads and passes the ball too much and holds on the ball too much I feel like Ray John Rondo should play a maximum of 25 minutes a night. And that's purely on the second unit. Stop playing Lonzo and Rondo together. It worked before because I guess LeBron was on the court. But when you just have Ray John Rondo and Lonzo on the court and no LeBron, it doesn't work at all. Now, I'm not going to make excuses for Lonzo because he did play a terrible game. He only had, I think, four points and didn't make any impact on either end whatsoever, at least through defense. You know, if your shot's not falling, Lonzo usually picks it up on defense with, you know, deflection, getting in the lane, being aggressive, all that. But he didn't do a damn thing. I mean, he was just, I think he made two layups. He was hitting his three ball, and then he just got at the game. I think he didn't close out with the fourth quarter either. It's the second straight game. Lonzo played like this all scared and willy-nilly, and this is the the time when Ray John Rondo came back. I don't know if something's going on. Lonzo's scared to losing his job or he's intimidated by Rondo, but he needs to play like Rondo is on another suspension because this is not, you know, what your number two overall pick. Starting point guard with LeBron James on your team should do. So I think he's got to play better or he's going to it's gonna hinder his confidence off because Luke Walton does not hesitate to put Lonzo on the bench as we saw with, you know, game one and game two of the season. And the overall feel of this game, especially in the second half, is the Lakers didn't want to play tonight. LeBron James, 
you know, his stats look amazing on the box score, but he didn't play any defense. He didn't close out on any three-pointers. It felt like he was hesitant on offense, you know, because LeBron James was a walking 25, 8, and 8. Easy. And he, I think he had 28. But he wasn't, like, aggressive. He wasn't driving. He was missing wide open layups. He, he lost the ball uh, in the fourth quarter in the late game. Now, I don't want to, you know, jinx it that LeBron James is getting old or anything like that, but he needs to be more assertive in the circus dominance as the best player in the world. And going back to B.I., I think B.I. only played the only good defense by a uh, Laker and JaVale McGee on the team. JaVale McGee is an amazing player on the Lakers. He does his job every night consistent. He doesn't expect 20 and 15 out of him. He does his job every night, plays 25 to 28 minutes a night, and it's easy. And in the late uh, fourth quarter, we let Jimmy Butler hit five threes. And we had Ray John Rondo switching on him, and he can just elevate. I think Ray John Rondo is 6'1", and Jimmy Butler is 6'7", so that's a, that's a good shot. Because Brandon Ingram was playing Jimmy Butler very well, so they get the switches. See, that's when Luke needs to make the sub to get Lonzo in the game, because Lonzo is 6'6", and is a great defender. Ray John Rondo is not a good defender like people think he is anymore. And throughout the whole game in the third quarter, I was like, we're not winning this game. We don't even look like we want to win this game. He wasn't being hype. He wasn't moving in pace. We wasn't finishing layups, finishing shots, playing defense, picking up switches. Now, a lot of people want Luke Walton to be fired or something like that. You know, Laker fans are never patient, so I got to get used to that. So Luke Walton played a lot of different lineups tonight because everybody, this is our first game back with everybody since game one, so it's going to be different lineups regardless. But Luke Walton could did a better job, I suppose. You know, Josh Hart only played 24 minutes. He had five points, one for four from three. And KCP only played six. I think KCP is going to be at this lineup, even though I don't want him to, because we suffer from our half-court sets. Luke Walden doesn't run good half-court sets. If we don't run out of transition, if we don't have LeBron pounding the ball or even Ray John Rondo, we're going to get a terrible shot or end up in an ISO situation with Kuzma and Ingram. We have terrible offensive sets. I don't know who uh, was the game plan for this. I think we are like last in half-court efficiency. So then the Lakers are going to turn to the Cavs with LeBron James high pick and roll with Javel McGee and kicks out to the shooter, which we cannot do again. And then we let, uh, I forgot his name, a Kogi get 17 points, the rookie, their first round pick, the Timberwolves. And then we let Jimmy Butler hit six out of seven three-pointers. And Jimmy Butler is not a shooter. I don't know what kind of coverages we were running. I don't know why we're going under the screens on the pick and roll. Why we had Rajon Rondo guard him for three of those in the fourth quarter, but that was literally the turning point. All them threes, then Cat hitting some threes, even though Cat didn't have a really good game. You know, he grabbed some rebounds, he, you know, hit some threes here and there, but he didn't really play that good, and we still lost. All in all, this was a very frustrating loss, probably the most frustrating loss of the season. You know, other other losses I could get, you know, first games, da 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 da. But this, we should have been blew them out. I thought we was gonna blow them out, especially with everybody back from you know suspension. And Wednesday we have the Mavericks. I guarantee you, if we don't beat the Mavericks, it's gonna be a lot of uproar and a lot of slander on every social media site, ESPN everything so we have to beat the Mavericks they're two and five just like our record and we're way better than the Mavericks just because we have a guy named LeBron James on our team the guys I need to step up is my main focus is Lonzo Ball you know he has to play better and I think Jonathan Williams has to make a bigger impact as that backup center because JaVale McGee can't play 35 minutes a night and I think LeBron James needs to improve his defense he doesn't need to score 30 with 10 and 10 if he has 22, five and five with solid defense and closing out on his man. We will win more ball games. That'll be all for this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I'm out. Peace.